Hi everyone. So before we get into isolating caffeine, um, I'm going to talk about separatory funnels. We use them a lot in this class to separate components with different uh, organic and aqueous solubilities. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is actually the motion by which you use it um, because it can be done specifically to make sure you don't spill on yourself or uh, um, and you do so in the most safe way possible. So here's my separatory funnel. Um, the first thing I want to introduce you to is this, which is the stopcock. So as it is right now, this is in the closed position. Um, it's, I like to think of it as like a little wall, which is blocking uh, the liquid from flowing out of this. In order to let liquid flow later when I'm trying to collect my layers of solvent, I will turn it vertically and that allows a little hole in the stopcock to uh, allow flow through uh, the stem of the set funnel down here. Um, so the next thing to talk about is shaking. Um, so let's, you'll, you'll see it shortly, um, I'll have two layers of organic and aqueous solvents in my set funnel and I will be shaking them to uh, make sure that all of the organic molecules um, can be dissolved in the organic layer and all the aqueous can be in the aqueous layer. Um, so while I'm shaking, I'm gonna put on the cap, which I refer to as the shaking cap because it only needs to be on while you're shaking. And I'm gonna do kind of a sweet wine glass holding motion here. Um, and I'm going to brace the stopper uh, with my thumb. Uh, because as you shake, depending on what you have in here, you can actually build up pressure in the chamber. And when it, you build up too much pressure, this can go popping off. And so you're gonna hold it with your thumb. And the way that we shake is in a fume hood, which is gonna be right here for right now. I'm actually going to invert it and I'm gonna shake it like this or more stably like this. And you have to shake these things fairly hard. It depends on precisely what you're working with um, and whether you're worried about forming some kind of foam. But I tend to shake my set funnels very hard, um, which allows the layers to mix really well and you're gonna get better recoveries of the components inside. While you're shaking, um, you're gonna build up pressure, like I was talking about earlier. And so the way that you deal with that is you let the pressure out of the stopcock. And so while still holding it at the bottom like this, you're going to vent by just leaving that open for a brief second, closing, and continuing to shake. Um, so that venting is going to uh, allow uh, even better mixture of the layers and better transfer of your organic and aqueous components. Um, and several shake and vent cycles are going to happen before you're done. But then you're going to bring it upright, set it in its holder, and take the cap off. Um, depending on what you're working with, sometimes you need to give the layers time to form. Maybe the solvents have intertwined with each other quite a bit, and it's gonna take a while for them to separate. Um, I think today, uh, with caffeine, we're using a water-based mixture and DCM, which separate rather quickly, actually. Um, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, and then, once the layers have separated, then you can take out the bottom layer uh, by letting it through into some kind of collection container. Um, and then you take out the top layer the same way. Um, so now, uh, with those basic movements uh, talked about, I feel ready to start setting up the actual experiment and we're gonna show that to you shortly. Okay, so now that we've talked generally about separatory funnels, uh, let's do this actual experiment here. Uh, so here is my beautiful grape, apparently, energy drink. Um, this is absolutely packed with caffeine, and in fact, I think that the stock room has uh, spiked it with additional caffeine for effect. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna do uh, in extracting the caffeine out of this energy drink is I'm going to dissolve in a little bit of sodium carbonate. Um, so sodium carbonate is there to saturate the water layer in the separatory funnel. And just 
just going to swirl until it's perfectly dissolved. Uh, so what we're trying to do with the sodium carbonate is saturate the aqueous layer and make it packed with solute. Um, and what that will do is when we introduce the organic layer, the DCM, it will make the caffeine more likely to transfer over to the organic layer because the aqueous layer is so concentrated. Okay. That looks dissolved. Um, before I use my set funnel, I'm going to do just a quick leak check. Um, this is a bottle of distilled water. So you can see that in the closed position, um, this is not going to allow any water through. Um, but if I open it up just into the energy drink, because it's just water, that's going to allow water to flow through. So we're good on leaks. Ready to do this. And I'm going to add my energy drink to the set funnel. Now, let's talk about dichloromethane, um, which is the solvent we're going to extract the caffeine out into. Uh, dichloromethane, you can see all of these wonderful hazard symbols on the face of the bottle. Um, perhaps the most important to know is that it's a widely accepted carcinogen. Um, and that's with repeated exposure, um, with a splash on the hand or so, not as dangerous, um, but with repeated use, like if you use this in your job, um, it's something that you would most certainly want uh, to be very stringent with your PPE on. Um, but we're gonna use it because it's just fantastic at dissolving caffeine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out 15 milliliters to start. And now let's talk about these layers. So, you can see that the layers have already formed without any agitation. Um, DCM is this clear layer down here at the bottom. And the energy drink, which is mostly water, is this uh, purple layer up here at the top. Um, DCM is at the bottom of the container because it is the more dense liquid. And so if you're ever unsure about uh, which layer is which, you can look up the densities and the more dense liquid is going to be at the bottom. Um, alternatively, uh, you can also drip in a little bit of water and whichever layer the water rests in is going to be the aqueous layer because it's mixing with water like itself. Um, so there's two ways in case you ever mix up your layers and you're unsure. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to shaking. So I've got my cap on. And I'm going to shake several times while supporting the bottom here. And I'm going to vent. I'm not sure if you can hear it over the fan, but you can actually hear a little whistle out of the set funnel when I vent. It's the escape of gases that build up as you're shaking that volatile DCM around. And I'm going to do this just more times. One more. And tied up. So, this has created an emulsion, which is like a foam made of a liquid and another liquid which don't mix. But you can see, as it rests, the emulsion is breaking. Um, the DCM is settling in the bottom while the water layer is returning to the top. Now, the dyes 
that were in the energy drink are remaining in the water layer, which is why the top layer is still the colored one. The caffeine and DCM are both colorless, so that's going to be just a clear bottom layer. So you can see me kind of wine swirling this container. That's to gently break up the emulsion and speed up that process. I still have a little bit of foam layer here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, collect my DCM caffeine mixture down here at the bottom uh, because uh, we're just going to do another extraction with more DCM. Um, so there, we're going to be able to collect anything that we leave this time. So in order to collect this, I'm going to open up my valve here. I'm going to carefully watch the DCM fall out into my collection container. And I am going to stop this with a little bit of DCM left in here. Because I'm adding more DCM again, I might as well leave a little bit in here and make sure no water escapes into my collection. So there's the little bit of DCM that I left, um, and here is my nice, clear DCM caffeine mixture. So now I'm going to extract again with another 10 milliliters of DCM. So fresh DCM. Second extraction is just to get anything left over after the first was done. So I've got a little layer of uh, emulsion here still. Um, I'm going to go ahead and collect all of the DCM that I can. Um, now this is my final collection, which means I want to leave as little DCM and caffeine in the set funnel as possible. So I want to bring it down uh, and collect all of the DCM, but I do not want to collect any of this emulsion or any of this aqueous layer. I, the next step that we're going to do with this is we are going to put this in the rotary evaporator or the rotovap. Um, and that requires a very, very dry solution, which means there can be no water present. So I am better off leaving a little bit of DCM in here just to be absolutely sure I do not get any aqueous layer into my collection flows. but I am going to try to get as much out as possible. I left a little bit of DCM in there. Uh, I think that's plenty good for right now. And I see absolutely no colored aqueous layer or emulsion in my collection flask. So that's good. Um, 
So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to take our DCM and we are going to dry it with a chemical drying agent. Uh, because even tiny amounts of water will be left over after we rotovap away the DCM. Because rotovaps are not very effective at removing water from solids. So in order to chemically dry the mixture, I'm going to add sodium sulfate, which chemically bonds to water uh, in order to turn the water into a solid phase so that it can be left behind in this container while I pour off the DCM and caffeine into my rotovap container. So you never know exactly how much sodium sulfate you're gonna need. I like to start by adding enough to coat the bottom of the container. So when sodium sulfate is dry, it looks like this. It is a white powder which flows around itself very nicely. When sodium sulfate uh, comes in contact with water, it becomes sticky and it globs onto itself and anything that it touches. So the sodium sulfate that I just put in there, let's see if I can get the camera to focus, is stuck against the glass and it's in big globules on itself because it found some water, reacted with it, and became sticky. So I need to add more. And I'm gonna continue adding more and swirling and letting it settle and checking um, until the new stuff that I put in is going to stay exactly uh, as powdery and free flowing as this stuff. Um, once I put some sodium sulfate in and it has no effect and it doesn't turn sticky, I know that all of the water has been soaked up and reacted with by other sodium sulfate The DCM has been dried thoroughly. And I always tell students that if you're ever unsure, if you think you're there but you're not sure, it never hurts to just let it sit for two or three minutes. But it's a little hard to see because they are fine granules. It kind of just looks like a paste, but it's freely flowing around itself. Um, the stuff that's stuck to the sides of the glass, that's never gonna become less sticky. Uh, the stuff that found water, found water. But the new stuff is nice and free flowing, so I can continue. All right, so let's take my dried DCM and I'm going to decant it into a round bottom flask, which means I'm going to leave the solids behind, the sodium sulfate and water, and I'm going to collect the DCM and caffeine. If you're unsure about your pouring ability, you can also use a funnel and a piece of filter paper, but I believe in myself and so should you. So we're going to decant. So, this is just caffeine and DCM. Now I can take it over to the rotovap and remove the DCM and collect my caffeine. Here we go. Uh, so, here is my DCM and caffeine mixture. Let's go ahead and remove the DCM. Um, so, this beautiful thing is the rotovap. Let me just put my flask on here while I walk you through it. Um, so the rotovap is great 
at quickly removing volatile solvents. Um, volatile solvents like hexane or acetone or DCM. Um, and the way that it does this is by creating an ideal situation to evaporate down at the reaction flask, and then it collects the fumes up here. Um, so first we roto, then we bat. I'm gonna rotate the flask. It's gonna agitate it. It's gonna spread out the liquid. All of these things are going to give us a uh, lesser chance of creating a bubble in here, which can cause issues. Um, it's going to, we're going to drop the flask into a warm bath. This is at like 30 degrees. And the reason that we do that is because as this evaporates, it's gonna get really, really cold. Um, and so we need to just balance that out and keep it about room temperature by gently heating. Um, so with all that done, what we have to do now is we have to create a vacuum chamber. And when we create a vacuum chamber, uh, the volatile solvents down here are going to evaporate very, very quickly. Um, the solvents are gonna travel up this arm here into our grand condenser. And there's a bucket of ice water with a water pump down here, and it's circulating ice water through this cold grand condenser right here. So the fumes are gonna come up and hit this ice cold glass, and they're gonna collect on this and fall down into a waste container, which we have right here. Um, so you're gonna see that very shortly. Let's go ahead and turn on our vacuum. Gonna be a little noisy. Um, I've got an air vent right here, which is not allowing vacuum, uh, vacuum to be built up. So I'm gonna close that and start building vacuum. And instantly, we start seeing the grand condenser plowed up with uh, the DCM that is condensing on its surfaces. And we are seeing the DCM dripping down off the condenser dripping down off the back of the condenser housing. And we're also getting a thin line of solid in our reaction flask here as the uh, solvent evaporates and leaves the system. And so we're just gonna watch this drip for a moment and within about 30 seconds, all of the DCM is gonna be gone and we're gonna be left with a reaction flask down here uh, that is just, it has its walls plastered with caffeine. Now, uh, for this lab, you guys need the mass of the caffeine uh, to calculate the initial concentration. So I've gotten the mass of this container already while it was dry and clean. Um, and then I'm also going to collect the mass after this is done when it's just the mass of the container and the caffeine. Uh, then you can subtract out the mass of the container and you know your caffeine mass. So the dripping has stopped mostly. Let's give it another five seconds. All right, good enough. Um, so we're gonna bring it out, see the transformation, kill the spin and kill the vacuum. Now this is still under vacuum. I need to open up the air vent, that's why that's there. I'm gonna do it gently, because this caffeine's kind of fluffy, and I don't wanna like poof it. Alrighty. So, here, is our caffeine. And it's just got a thick layer of it all across the interior of the round bottom flask. Um, so aside from a mass of this, I'm also going to collect a melting point and I'm gonna get that just by scraping the bottom out with a spatula, crushing that dry stuff down to a really nice powder and putting it into a melting point capillary. Um, so we're gonna get that data to you as soon as possible and uh, that's it for today. Thank you.